Hey everyone, if you've ever watched The Engineering Family, one thing you're going to find out is that we like to do things that are different. One of them that we thought was really cool was try to find ways to make a hologram. That's pretty tricky in a video without using some sort of special effects. But one way you can do it is with a mirror scope. That's right, this little frog was in a bowl. So we put him back in, put the top back on, and boom. There he is. Got to get him lined up perfectly. But once he's lined up, he's back in there. So how do you create this effect? How do you create holograms? And it's doing these type of effects, something that's going to keep you interested and make YouTube a little bit more fun for you. Or any kind of video. Let's check it out. So again, there are several ways to create a hologram. This one right here is probably the coolest effect you can have. But it doesn't always work with anything. So this right here is a little frog or toad. And he's inside, but you open it up and you see there's a silver bowl. That silver bowl reflects against this silver bowl and it creates a parabolic effect that shoots our little toad friend through the opening at the top. Now, not just everything will work. You have to have a kind of a general shape and it can't be too big. So right here's a little uh, eraser. Let's see if it works. And again, it kind of works, doesn't it? Pretty cool. But how do you take this effect and do it on a bigger scale? That's always the challenge. So this right here was actually our very first attempt at making a hologram. If you can see it, it looks kind of broken up. It doesn't look anything like a hologram, right? Well, that's because it's a fan spinning. And so because of the frame rate of the camera and the shutter speed, it, ha it makes it look like it's broken up. Now if we slow the shutter down below 60, you can see that it becomes more of a continuous, um, you don't see the fan effect. So we take, unplug it, and you'll see it really is just a fan. So you can see the fan spinning here. And so why don't we use this one? Well, frankly, it just didn't work very well. Um, there's no sound that comes out of it, which is one of the problems. The other part of it is, is that, you know, it's actually kind of dangerous. I was gonna have to build a shield around it. And then second, the video files plug in right here through a micro SD card and they have to be manipulated so you can't just put it in a regular mp4 or MOV file and have it play you got to go through their app and convert it and it was kind of a pain in the butt so since it didn't work real well out it went uh, these type of fans are still used in store displays um, they're used on pinball machines and, and things give you kind of a okay effect it's not a hologram effect it's a kind of a transparent uh, effect so sorry that one just didn't work for us so if you watched some of our previous videos you'll see this gigantic machine right here um, that's kind of next to the table where we do some of our reviews and stuff and this is how we got plugged in to being able to do actual cool holograms um, we, we did it in one video and it performed pretty well um, it is a fair amount of work so we're going to go through the steps to show you how when we saw the mirror scope earlier with the little toad, how we can combine that, or how that was combined, into this giant washing machine looking thing to create a truly fun hologram. First of all, let's see what this thing is. So this is actually the game Time Traveler by Sega. Um, unless you're really old like me, you probably have no idea what Time Traveler by Sega is. Well, that's okay. So we're going we're to show you how it works, show you a little bit about the game, and then how, most importantly, that cool hologram effect took place. So here it is, the game Time Traveler. It truly is a, a cool hologram effect. Now, it came out in the early 90s, and, uh, well, the game itself is pretty cheesy. It's never going to win any awards. It actually has true acting in it. It uses a laser disc to... Um, to get the actual video onto the hologram effect. And we're going to show you how the hologram effect works here in a second too. So the game works as you're a cowboy and you got to fight bad guys. And you travel through time to try to get it. Now it's kind of hard to play this while recording. Now the game itself is double recorded in order to give it kind of a shadow. So you can probably see that part of it's bright and then you can see underneath it it's a reflected it's a reflected picture. Now when we do our hologram effect, we're not going to do a true 
we're not going to do a true um, reflection on it. So right here, it's reflected up and down. If that makes any sense. So again, you got the top image and you got the bottom image. So when it's recorded, it's actually a mirror of each other. So that's one th way that you can get the depth for the hologram. One other thing to look at is notice that none of the colors here are black. The black is just in the background, and that's for a very, very important reason that we'll go over again. So this is truly probably one of the best hologram effects ever in a, in a game that I've seen. And I looked for this game for many years to try to duplicate it. Hey, okay, for everyone, you're going to see something that it took me a long time to be able to see with my own two eyes. Um, this is not an easy game to source. Um, uh, it's not a particularly super fun game, but it's a pretty rare game. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up Time Traveler and look inside of it to see how it creates that effect. Okay? And we're going to try to do it without breaking the game. It might be kind of tricky. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I've opened up the cabinet and everything is really dark. So I've got my uh, portable filming light to kind of give you a uh, bird's eye view of what we have. First, again, this is old. So if you're a kid, you probably, maybe you've never seen a TV like that. It's an old-fashioned Sony Trinitron, probably 300-pound TV. These things are super, super heavy. Um, it's also just a CRT. So you see how it's kind of fastened in there, right? And this is the cool part. Now, re remember, everything, how I told you that none of the colors that were in the hologram were black. They just weren't. And that's because this TV is pushed up against this it's a bowl so do you see this bowl it's going to be real hard to get the actual view of it because it is black and it's dark so this is just a black semicircle bowl and so what happens is everything reflects off this tv right here just like that frog remember so in this case the image on the tv is the frog or the toad it hits this black bowl and it reflects up onto the screen that's up there that you play so that's why it's so important that you don't have any black in the image that's created for this game because if it did all of that color would be lost inside of this bowl so i wish i had a better way of showing let's turn some lights off and see if it helps so just like the bowl we had for the toad and the reflection on the mirror scope this one right here is solid black and it reflects off the TV screen. So in order to create the hologram effect, what we have to do is we have to get a screen or we have to get an image onto this television that can reflect onto that and then back up it goes. How hard is that to do? Well, honestly, it's not that hard. Um, the trickiest part is getting an image to the television. Okay, so for the engineering family, what we would do next is we would green screen something. Now, i got to iron my green screen back out. It doesn't look that great right now. But that would be the next step, would be to have something green screened that we can key out this background to put it into a memory card that we can connect then to the machine to feed it through the television to have the hologram made. I like to use my hands at times. <laughs> Anyhow, so that's the next step of it. Um, uh, the game itself, remember, used a mirror image, which wouldn't be that difficult to make, but we're not going to do it for this one. So let's see how we're going to do the, the next step. Okay, so we've got a media card reader. I have uh, have an edited video. I've removed the green screen. I've put down this SD card. I'm going to put in the media reader, and we're ready to go, right? We can just play that file right into this time traveler game from 1993, and it's going to work perfectly. It's not going to work perfectly. No, unfortunately, this has, of course, an HDMI output. You can maybe find one with different outputs, but this one's HDMI. So what does that mean? It means you got to have an HDMI cable. No big deal. We all have dozens of those these days. But it means you got to run it into this, an HDMI to AV plug. That, of course, requires power. So I've got it plugged into a, you know, a little battery pack. Well, the actual HDMI reader needs one. The media reader needs one. So I've got that plugged in now. And then you've got your HDMI to AV, and now you've got your three AV cords, right? You've got an audio, 
I'm sorry, you've got a video, which is typically yellow, I believe, for most of them, and then white and red are your two channels for stereo. <laughs> well, not everything is stereo, so you'll have to figure out which uh, channel you need, or if both or just one, so you have to play around. But now we're ready to plug in the video into that Sony Trinitron TV to see if we can get our game to play. Now this video right here is something I already had that we used on the engineering family, but it should show you how it works. So this is the back of the game. This is the back of Time Traveler. Right there is where the laser disc player would go. Right now I've got a Dexter, and a Dexter emulates the laser disc player so you can play the game. Laser disc players, for those who are not uh, familiar, are pretty uh, finicky, and it can be a challenge to operate. Now I, I have a couple that will work for this game, but um, right now I'm just using the Dexter because it's easier. So the TV, of course, is back there. This spot right here, you can probably see it, is the bowl. So see the bowl here? Again, it's so hard to see because it is black. There you go. So this is the convex part of the bowl, which will then reflect the image up into the screen up top. So this right here is the kind of the control center for the entire game. And what I need is to find what cable runs the TV. And it looks like this one right here is the one. So all I have to do is disconnect the one coming out of the game and then connect it into with this one and let's see if it works okay so let's just make that connection and try to have it in focus just like that let's see if it works okay so this is the menu right here for the uh, HDMI uh, card reader that I have the media card reader so we've got to try to figure out how to operate this upside down using our friendly remote control here that comes with it. And so I think we have to go to... And there we have it. We've got a file. So you can see how they're popping up. And again, the areas that are black don't show up very well. But these are, like I said, this is the stuff that we used in our actual engineering family video. So here you can see Black Panther. And you can see how his costume doesn't look quite right because it's actually reflecting up against that black screen. Something like Green Goblin, when we recorded it, we would actually key it against the green screen, we'd key it against the blue screen. So there you have it. We've now customized our Time Traveler game to play files that we recorded against the green screen. Now I could do a video of, of uh, of me talking, I can have the assistant in here, whatever we want to do, but this is how it is actually working. So I think that's a pretty cool application for the mirror scope to make a hologram. The last way I'm going to talk about how to make a hologram is using, uh, demonstrating it on the game called Dialed In, which is a pinball machine. So this is the Quantum Theater. And how it works is you've got a piece of glass right here that's diagonal. See, the glass is at a 45 degree angle. So again, it's going to be pretty difficult to see it but we can try. So there's a 45 degree angle, and then there's a screen up top. That screen reflects down to that 45 degree. Uh... In order to get the, the hologram. So watch, we're gonna put a ball through there. Try to. And let's see what happens. So let's see if we can get that hologram to work. So right there, do you see it? See if we can get it so it's right there you see that little um drone that's on there so that is coming from the top and reflecting onto that bottom screen so again it's kind of tricky to see but so there it goes you can see that cool effect right off of the screen so that's another way to do a hologram is with a 45 degree piece of like plexiglass and another screen that reflects at 45 degrees so the image looks like it's coming straight down. 
So again, you have a 45 degree screen, a 45 degree screen up top. This is just glass, right? And so it reflects the top into that to give it that cool hologram look. So there you go. We've shown three different, well really four different ways to make a hologram. We had the mirror scope with the toad. We used the fan that was over here. That didn't really work too well. <laughs> we experimented with the game Time Traveler to see how we can get use a mirror scope to modify files and to uh, actually create a hologram machine. Um, hey, if you uh, happen to do this on your own, I'd love to see what you guys come up with. Are you able to make your own machine? That'd be fantastic. Um, so, hey, if you find a way to do it, you got a video, tag me in it, I'd love to see it. And then finally, we saw a more common um, everyday way of making a hologram in the game Dialed In that had the two different screens, the glass and the screen at 45 degree angles, so it gave the image, that it, the appearance that the image was coming straight up. Another cool way of doing it, not a wrong way of doing it. So anyhow, what's your favorite method? Just like I said, I'd love to find out. I'd love to see what you've done. And uh, hey, everyone, just stay plugged in. Take care.